is a big data architect uh, in the in the DAS group at NERSC. Um, he's a Hanju physicist by training. Uh, was in the UK uh, handling data challenges for the Large Hadron Collider before coming here. And uh, you know, over the years, he's definitely developed a lot of expertise in uh, deep learning. Deep learning as applied to Hanju physics, both classification and, and generative problems. Um, last year, I think we worked on scaling deep learning on, on the biggest CPU system that we have at NERSC, the, the Cori system. And this year, he's been working on something called the Lumis project that hopefully you're gonna hear about later, later on in the day. All right, take it away. Okay, thanks. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna tell you about the NERSC deep learning stack. So here you don't get lunch without working. So I'm not between you and lunch, but I'm between you and sunshine. So I won't, don't worry, I won't take the whole break. Um, so. Okay, um, so I'm just going to give a brief, super brief introduction to NERSC, talk about uh, the production stack at NERSC, the, the tools that we provide and why, uh, and then a little bit of practical information. So that's probably what you actually want to pay attention to, which is at the end. Okay, so you heard this from Sudeep, uh, NERSC is the mission HPC center for the Department of Energy. So we support the full range of Department of Energy Science and the you know, vast number of Department of Energy scientists. Uh, the main machine we have on the floor is Cori, uh, and there was an Edison box here until recently, but that's uh, retired now, so the only machine we have really is Cori. This is predominantly made up of ten, around 10,000 Knights Landing CPU nodes, so that's where the bulk of the blocks came from. And when this machine was installed, it was like the first big KNL machine really, and in fact by peak blocks, the biggest machine in the country, but that's dropped down now. Um, so, you know, we have this combination of uh, as well and Xeon Phi nodes, and then these are all connected with uh, high speed interconnect and Cray, so you can run big jobs on these. And then, of course, large file system, both a uh, Lustre file system and a flash uh, burst buffer STD file system. Um, so, this is the big machine, but then we also have a small uh, uh, test system now composed of GPUs, and actually, that's what you'll be running on in some of the exercises if you run them at NERSC. Uh, so that just has a small number of, uh, well, relatively small number of uh, V100 Volta GPUs. Okay, so the reason we have a GPU t test system is partly because we're expecting a, a big GPU machine, our next machine, Perlmutter. Uh, so this should have about four times the capability of Cori. Uh, and, you know, a lot of those blocks will come from the GPU accelerated nodes, uh, which are exciting to people doing deep learning. Um, but there's also many parts of, so I, I guess we're hoping that you guys are going to push science all to use deep learning and therefore make exploit the GPU nodes. But if you don't manage to do that, then there'll still be a large amount of work that needs to run on CPU nodes. And so we'll have a CPU partition that's you know, as big as Cori, but composed of um, AMD CPUs. Um, so, you know, it, this machine should fly for deep learning. So we'll have an optimized stack to provide that. And that, you know, a lot of the preparation for that we're doing now. Uh, and then the GPU nodes uh, will be comprised of four of these Volta Next GPUs. So current machine has these V100 GPUs. This will actually have the next generation of GPUs. Um, and you know, a lot of details about that are kind of secret, but you know, we'll at least have tensor cores, MVLink 3 for connecting the GPUs together so you can use them all, uh, as well as a, a Milan CPU in there as well. Um, and then this will all be connected again by a high speed uh, interconnect, but one of the differences on this machine is it's uh, Ethernet compatible. So that will make it much easier to also transfer big data sets from outside into the machine at the you know, same kind of rates that we need um, you know, for supporting experimental science. So that's exciting too. Uh, and then you know, currently we have this relatively small burst buffer as part of Cori, but on, uh, on Perlmutter, it will, the whole file system will be uh, flash based. So that's exciting too. Uh, and this is coming in, in late 2020. Okay, so to get to the production stack. Um, so, you know, as Prabhat mentioned, machine learning in science is certainly growing. Uh, so, you know, last year we did a survey and that, there's lots of interesting results from these survey that we can talk about another time. But uh, one thing is that we saw that, you know, the respondents to the survey were across various types of science. So there's interest across science. Um, you know, this is a little thing we have on our website about some examples that we work with, uh, projects that we work with or that are at the lab. You know, and you're learning all about supervised and unsupervised learning and uh, different techniques. And you know, across this gamut, there's science examples already. And um, you know, we have in-depth experience of some of those. Um, 
So, you know, given that interest and, and need for deep learning, uh, we want to provide a platform, if you like, for doing that. So, you know, at the top here are the scientists or actual experiments, uh, and they should have both, you know, interactive ways of doing that. So this is where Jupyter notebooks and stuff come in, but they should also be able to, you know, plumb into automated pipelines. And then these should sit atop of suitable methods and stuff. So that's where, you know, things like this um, school help to like, show, you know, uh, push, encourage cutting edge methods. Um, but then these should sit on top of optimized libraries. So we work a lot on, on making sure that libraries work well on the hardware that we have. So we also try and get the best hardware um, to uh, meet this need. Um, so, you know, uh, Prabhat's group, the data analytics group, which I'm in, and, and Mustafa and Steve as well, who'll be talking later, um, you know, work on all of these aspects as well as other things. And you can, you can visit the website to, to learn about that and you can get documentation. Okay, so to be more specific, uh, here's kind of like the deep learning stack on an HPC machine. And there's a bunch of things like the hardware here and the libraries that you probably don't have to worry about as a user. Uh, you know, we will be talking a bit about the deep learning libraries and the, uh, the distributed libraries uh, in uh, Friday's session on distributed training. Um, but, you know, most of what the user sees is really up here in these sort of high level frameworks. Uh, and talking about high level frameworks, so again, from the survey, we saw really that the dominant uh, framework in use today is TensorFlow. And you know, when I started sort of working on deep learning with NERSC, it was about four years ago or something, CAFE was the framework that people used, and then Theano. Uh, but then TensorFlow was released, and you can see how it comes to dominate. Now, you know, PyTorch here is also a significant and growing uh, framework of interest, and, and uh, Steve and NERSC uh, supports PyTorch on our machines, and we have a bunch of Facebook people talking this week, so I'm not going to criticize PyTorch very not, uh, much, and, and uh, I know there's many great things about it as well, but a lot of the exercises we'll be doing are in TensorFlow, which is the sort of uh, most popular at the moment and perhaps easiest to work with, particularly with Keras. Okay, so now the practical part, so you can pay attention if you weren't before. Uh, luckily, because you've got food in your hand, you have no choice but to pay attention. So, <laughs> so um, okay, so today's uh, hands-on session and the little one we have tomorrow and the Thursday's lunch self-guided one uh, we'll all be running Jupyter on NERSC. Uh, so this, for the people who have uh, NERSC accounts, this is a different Jupyter site, Jupyter DL, uh, and I'll, I'll show you this in a minute. Um, or you can, if you want, just run these exercises in Google's co-laboratory. So we have links for both. So if you wanted to just use Google's service, you could just run them there if you want. But if you want to use NERSC machine, you can. No, 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 that's just the their service on their cloud. Yeah. So on, on their cloud, you don't often get a GPU, actually. You used to initially when they launched it, but now you don't. So you know you may prefer to run on this if you do get a GPU. OK, so oh, another question. Yeah. <laughs> on this one? OK, yeah. Well, so I mean, so ultimately, um, so at the moment, it's four hours. So it will time out. So if you wanted to do, so I mean, this is something we've just set up for the school to do the hands-on exercises. And I will come to what, what hours it's available and things like that on there. We have a reservation, so a number of hours. Uh, in general, the service at NERSC, um, it depends how. <laughs> but um, you know, at the moment on the GP, we don't let people run more than four hours anyway, so you have to checkpoint. But if you, you know, the easiest way is just to submit to batch, and then you can submit many jobs, which will probably start from checkpoint. OK. Uh, so the Friday session will run on Cori because it's distributed, so we want multiple CPU nodes for that. Uh, so that one you will have to use a NERSC account. Uh, so for running at NERSC, you should use these training accounts. So you should have been given a user agreement. Uh, if you take that after I finish talking uh, and to the, the registration desk, uh, then you can get uh, uh, a training account that has a username and password on it. Uh, now, even if you have a NERSC account, if you want to use the reservation of GPU in this thing, you will need to use that uh, training account and return the form to get the training account. Um, but you can still run it on uh, regular Jupyter if you want the notebooks, but you won't get a GPU, and so they will run slowly and you shared. So, you know, probably you want to do this. Uh, just to comment, there is a little box for OTP. I'll show you the Jupyter login. There isn't an OTP for these training accounts, so you just leave that blank. 
Okay, then another practical thing. For tomorrow's working lunch, um, we'll make you work again, but again, it's uh, sort of lightweight working, uh, lunch with an expert. So we have various rooms and various people, uh, including the speakers from tomorrow. So we have Joel, the first speaker from tomorrow in here, and then we have Jessica, the second speaker uh, down in building 59. Uh, and then we have a couple of other topic-based uh, um, <coughs> sessions like breakouts, so deep learning for climate with Karthig, who's also in building 59, and uh, Nalini is doing a, a, another deep learning pipeline session. So, um, so there's various slots in because the rooms are not infinite size. So, you know, when you're at the registration table, you can also sign up for a slot. That's, so that's tomorrow lunchtime. So it'll be open till tomorrow lunchtime, but if you have a particular desire, you should sign up now. Okay. I think that's the end of the instruction there. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to show you briefly how to run this um, Jupyter DL. Um, so as I mentioned, these GPU nodes are, are reserved during the hands-on sessions. Outside those hours, the account will work, but we are sharing these GPUs with others, so you may not get a GPU. Uh, and in, in that case, the server won't start up, and you'll probably get an error message, but it will be all pretty obvious what's happening. Uh, and similarly, after 6 p.m. each day, you probably possibly won't get a note, probably, well, possibly. <laughs> uh, and so then, if, if it doesn't work, but you want to check your scripts and maybe make a couple of props or what have you, or download them, whatever you, you can just press this CPU node button, and that will get you in to do it. Okay. <coughs> Let's see if I can do this. So, what? Yeah, so there's an OTB box not filled in. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> okay, yeah. And uh, so you'll just put your training account and password here, and then you just sign in. Obviously, this is just like using regular Jupyter. If you don't use Jupyter normally. Uh, so this is a bit small now, but basically this is the GPU node. So you just press start on that. And hopefully it starts. Uh, can take a moment because it's actually starting a batch job and, and putting you into that. Shouldn't take that long. It might take longer when there's all of you doing it at the same time, but we have tested that, so it will work. Okay, so then you get a node, and if you, if you like, so for example, so GPU sat is installed, which is a nice program for seeing what GPU you have. And so if you run that, you see I ended up on GPU, GPU of one here, and here's the utilization of it. And then uh, there's various notebooks you know, that Steve will show you in the afternoon that you can run. Okay, so one gotcha, uh, occasionally you can, um, if you have multiple, if you just download all the notebooks and run them all at the same time, you might get a coup DNN issue because there's like too many things running on the same GPU and one of the other notebooks has it. And so then, you know, there's this little tiny green thing here which shows that this is running. You can stop the kernels on the by right clicking and shut down. Okay, and then one other point. Uh, so as I mentioned, this is running on the batch system. It will hold a GPU for four hours. Uh, just killing the window isn't enough to kill the process. So if you do want to be a nice citizen, you should uh, go to hub, control panel, stop the server like this. Um, and then, you know, it should give you some feedback that it stopped yet. So that it stopped, so then you can start again. Uh, but then you can log out or what have you. Now, if you actually start again, you might get a message that says this workspace is already in use. And that occurs because this window is open. So if you close this, leave that, and this, then you should be able to start again. It'll probably backfire. <laughs> yeah, well, when it's just one person at a time, it's all, it's all great. Yeah, anyway, so there you go, and you can get back to that. So then it goes in again, just to remind you this control panel stop to be a good citizen um, and then once it's stopped you can log out or not and that doesn't matter okay okay so that was that so then not much left i promise uh oh <coughs> just got confused by my full screen just now Okay, 
So that's that information. I don't know if there's any questions on that, actually. Maybe I should take a question if there's any questions on using this. So Steve will, OK, you have a question. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Don't don't do hardcore training on the CPU. I mean, it'll probably be. I mean, it should restrict you to one core and be bad enough anyway that you won't want to do it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't hack around and you take all the cores on the shared CPU. Okay. 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 So just uh, just don't run CPU deep, deep learning on the CPU. Shared codes. That's just, just use that to grab your scripts and, and run them on Colab or whatever. Okay. Ah, we're here to help. So, um, you know, there's a bunch of people at the top. We're kind of the organizers. Uh, Michaela isn't here. She's from Fair, but she'll be here tomorrow. Um, and you already met some of the others. Uh, and then we have a bunch of people who kindly volunteered to help out uh, as TAs. They have a range of skills. Some are systems, more systems experts, some are more deep learning experts. So, you know, you'll just have to ask, you know, you can ask whoever and they'll find the right person to help you. So commit all these faces to memory and then you'll, <laughs> but, but they are also on the website. So, uh, so that's, these are all TAs and Torsten will be helping out with scaling stuff. He's an expert in scaling on Friday. Okay, so conclusions. Uh, deep learning is awesome for science. Uh, and at NERSC, we, we, you know, we build on tools and hardware and um, you know, algorithms and stuff to, to make sure people can run these on our machines at scale. Uh, you know, there's various challenges we face in doing this. It's not just like computational, it's methodological and practical challenges. So we do welcome you know, new ideas and collaborations and whatnot. So do talk to us about that in the breaks and in the closed session or whatever. Oh, it's a good and enjoy the school. Uh, so. Good. And enjoy the sunshine. <laughs>